Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts You know, my girlfriend recently sent me something called um, that I have to look it up because I can't remember her name, but it's a, a woman who sings affirmations. Let me see oh, if really? I can pull it up. Um, she's amazing. Tony Jones. And the song that my friend sent me is called Currency. So like currency, but uh, current C, S-E-A at the end. Okay. And it's this beautiful a spoken poetry song about abundance and money. And it just has me jamming. I listen to it every day. Wow. Okay. So how is she spelling her name? T-O-N-I? T-O-N-I. T-O-N-I Jones. Yeah. Beautiful. Is she like on YouTube or something? I'm sure. I have found it on YouTube. I have it on Spotify. Oh, go on with yourself. You know, Spotify. Well, shout out to you, Tony Jones. This is <laughs> Kasha Rashful. Brains, she's from Canada, and you are here on the edge with me and Kasha. We're going to talk about the work that she does. And the reason why I resonated with her, Brains, is because I loved her tagline. It says that she is serving spiritually driven creatives who bring light to the world through their work and their purpose. That spoke to me because that's what I do, you know. I bring you light, I bring you wisdom, I bring you courage, I hope to increase your finances, I bring you love, spirituality, so there's a purpose in my work, that's why I do this, and that's why she does the work that she does. In addition to that, she works with entrepreneurs on a spiritual level, a little bit deeper, with the Akashic Records. I have talked to two or three of my guests that are heavily involved and invested in the Akashic Records. Last guest I had told me about how when she knocks on the door, there's two little people that come to greet her. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. You got to hear that. It was amazing. But I want to hear what your journey is like. I want to hear about what you help people uncover and discover about themselves through these vast volumes of encyclopedias of everyone on the planet. So mm -hmm. without further ado, we're going to bring her here to the edge. Kasha. Thanks. Thanks, April. It's so lovely to be here. It's such an honor. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you here on the edge because, again, I want to know as much as I can. You know, there's so mm -hmm. much uncertainty in the world right now. There's so much fear and fear mongering. People mm -hmm. are bullying and lying and, you know, trying to manipulate you. So we want some clarity. And we also want to get through some epigenetics. We want to get through and break some of these generational curses that have been placed on us so that we don't carry them into our next life's chapter. So tell me a little bit about how this all began for you and your story. Sure. It's a long story. I will make it short. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned the ancestral pain and the generational curses. Um, I don't necessarily uh, use the word curse, but I do believe that we bring with us imprints of uh, not just our ancestors, but also ourselves from past incarnations or past dimensional experiences. And that's really what happened to me. And when my children were born, I fell into a really deep postpartum depression. It was like the darkest night of the soul for me. Um, and I didn't understand why, because when you looked at my life from the outside in, it was the idyllic I had a boy, a girl, an amazing husband, you know, the house, the car, the cat, like you name it. I should have been happy and I wasn't. And I could not figure out why I felt trapped. I felt ashamed because as a woman, there's this, this unwritten expectation that you should love being a mother. And I simply didn't. And I, you know, it took me a while to figure that out, to admit that to myself because of the shame. And that's really what sparked my journey forward is um, I had a really great corporate career as an insurance underwriter. Like I could have been in that job for life, but, but I felt like that was not the place for me. And so that coupled with this depression that I was facing really felt like 
propelled me. And I discovered the work of Wayne Dyer, who then led me on to other things. And he was like the first breadcrumb. And then I kept following the breadcrumbs, chipping away at helping myself heal, helping myself feel better. Um, eventually, when my son was 12, um, so quite a while, quite a few years, um, I discovered this thing called the Akashic Records. And by that time, I had already um, gone back to school, gotten a degree in psychology, studied neurolinguistics, um, energy work, Reiki, like you name it, I had tried it all mostly in the name of helping myself and along the way having discovered this beautiful love for helping others serving others because as i chipped away at my problem and felt better i believed that no matter what you're facing you could feel better if you believed in yourself enough um so this thing kept popping up akashic records akashic records and i thought well you know i trust my intuition enough by now to that it leads me to the next thing and so i had a couple of readings didn't love it actually at all it did not resonate at all with with uh the two readers and i thought it was kind of i don't know if this is for me but it kept popping up and i've learned to listen to that when when spirit talks to you you listen right or you learn the hard way or you learn the hard way <laughs> um so i decided you know what fine i'm just gonna learn how to do this myself and so i studied with a teacher and i learned how to do it and i, I learned how to go into the records I don't see people, which is interesting that you said that about your other guest. Um, oh, yeah. I don't... Oh, my God. She she goes into from what she says, and I'll share afterwards, uh, and I'll sure. share with all of you too, right? Because it was very fascinating. She goes into a trance-like state, mm -hmm. uh, and she enters the door. She knocks on the door, and there's two little, um, I don't yeah. want to call them munchkins because I don't want to be disrespectful, but two little people that cool. come to meet her, and uh, they clap, and they bow to her. And they send her on her journey. She said they sit her at the same table as, uh, you know, and she does the reading for individuals and, you know, she is a conduit for them. Tell me a little bit about your experience when you work. How do you get into the state of being able to tap into these records? So first I, I learned with a teacher, I learned with Linda Howe, and she has a spoken key that you can either say to yourself or uh, out loud. And so it's really about a, a, an energy alignment. You, you get yourself into that state. And so it really works on intention. And I worked with that key to get in for um, probably four and a half, five years. And then I was given my own key and that's what I now teach. So I have my own course that I, a five months reader certification course in wow. the process that I was given that I now teach. But when I go in, um, I often don't see anything. Mine is more of a felt sense. And uh, whether I'm reading for myself or for others, I receive impressions of information, either in um, emotion, um, a lot of imagery. Sometimes I hear words. Uh, sometimes it's thought ideas or thought forms that I then interpret and translate into, obviously, English as best as I can. Um, so as I started working with the records for myself, I never, ever, April, thought I would be doing this sort of publicly in the world. I thought I would just be a coach and work, you know, with the NLP uh, training that I had and the Reiki training. But when my own healing happened and it was a past life thing and I was able to get the origin story of, of why I felt so trapped and, and finally able to heal myself, I thought, great, that's it. I'm going to shelve this and I'm going to go back to coaching. But the records had other plans for me. And I find that's how spirit works, doesn't it? It's you think this is what you're going to do. And spirit's like, actually, we invite you to go this way. And right. it'll work and a lot this better. Is, this is just an introduction. You spoke to Wayne Dyer. I remember uh, creating an audience for him, uh, KPBS. And it was absolutely amazing. Uh, when he walked into the room, the whole aura changed. Yeah. You know, he walked in with this yeah. bare feet and this calm demeanor. It's like nothing could shake him. You know, I loved him and he was him. so much common sense wisdom. That's what people I think need to begin with is common mm -hmm. sense wisdom, which isn't very common anymore, is to have a basic understanding of who they are and to be able to explain what they're feeling. My mother was one of those people that couldn't explain her feelings very well. You know, the little gauge at the doctor, how are you feeling between one being the worst? I mean, the best you've ever felt and 10 being the worst. She used to hate that. She goes, who yeah. invented that shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I said, well, mom, you know, you have to be able to gauge it. People are not able to gauge it. And they're troubled. Um, who's your ideal client? 
because everybody is not going to be for this modality. No, There's 2.4 no. billion people on the world mm -hmm. and uh, on the planet. And so who is your ideal client to work with after they've come through this, uh, this point of self-discovery and they know, like you knew, that they needed a change? Yeah, it's a great question. And the person really needs to have done a bunch of work already, mm. meaning um, they are not necessarily fresh in their pain. They know that um, they can't do it themselves. You know, they have tried all the, the books, the courses, like they've done the DIY thing. They have come far enough uh, in their healing journey that they know um when you collaborate with someone or you co-create with someone or a team of someone's, whether you have a therapist, a healer on your team, a coach, whoever, it just works better when you reach out your hand and you ask for help um, because that's where the co-creation really happens. And it's, it's someone, it's man or woman who has that spiritual desire, it knows they have a calling, whether they know what it is or not, but deep inside them, they know they want to be famous for the work they do in the world. And I don't mean celebrity famous. This is nothing to do with celebrity fame or viral fame, what I call sacred fame. It's a calling within you to know that you want to be fully seen and fully heard for the work you do in the world, whether it's in your community or in your country or globally, you have that desire for that renown, for, for being your authentic self and being the best at what you do. And that requires confidence. It requires trust. You must trust yourself. You must trust your spiritual guidance. Um, you can't compare yourself to anyone else, right? So, you, so this is why that connection with your soul, your higher self, your highest wisdom matters so much. And that's where the Akashic Records really help us. I'm going to go back to the Akashic Records, but you, you touched on something um, that you said. I want to ask you, um, what do you say to the person that finds this in contrast to the religious doctrine? Because mm -hmm. spirituality and religion are two different things. What do you say to that person? Absolutely. And it's a really great question. Um, the Akashic Records can be looked at from a scientific perspective as well. So it's not just a spiritual idea. Um, and in my course, we actually have a whole module on the science behind the records, because I understand that my, you know, myself included in the beginning, I did not believe in all this energy stuff or all this, like what I used to call woo woo. I don't think it's woo woo anymore. I think it's, it's real. But um, if you look at the science of epigenetics, which, you know, was developed by Dr. Bruce Lipton, who I adore, um, we inherit certain characteristics, whether we ask for them or not from our ancestors, from the people who created us, who created our parents or grandparents. And so we can look at it that way. Um, there's a whole bunch of quantum science that we can go into uh, to explain how uh, these things get imprinted on us or, or within us, within our DNA. And so um, I, I respect that certain religious views may not agree with this, but it's, it doesn't have anything to do with, with uh, religion necessarily right. and you also said that the person has already had to have done some exploration of their emotions yes. their feelings their needs their desires their wants their pain uh mm -hmm. before coming to work with you and i think that's great because it's just like going to a doctor you know mm -hmm. you need to have uh some notes <laughs> absolutely as to what your symptoms your experiences are where your pain is you know that yeah. one to ten you got to gauge it somewhere to know mm -hmm. what is important to you um you gave up a, a very lucrative career. Yes. What was your aha moment? I mean, I know that you went through postpartum. And again, I speak to women that are experiencing that right now. Get some help, honey. Just because you had a baby, that doesn't make you a fairy godmother. You know, things happen. Sometimes you look at that little person. I had my bout with it. It wasn't long, but I had my bout with it. And I looked at her and I was like, oh my God, what have I done? Ooh, <laughs> you know, and this has got to be with me forever. Mm -hmm. And now I absolutely adore her, but you know, and I adored her then, but it's just a lot. And realizing that you need help, reaching out to your partner and still being supportive, but also that self-care, all of those things are important or you will implode. You Absolutely. Absolutely. So the um, Akashic Records, tell us a little bit about what is inside the volumes of those records. Everything. And the more, this is why I love working with spiritually open clients, because 
um, I learn something new every time I do a session. And so I do one-on-one -on -one readings, but I also extensively rely on the Akashic Records wisdom when I work with someone ongoing, mm. you know, for either six weeks or 12 weeks, or sometimes even a year. Um, depending on the, a, a lot depends on the questions that the person comes with. And sometimes I have experienced where dimensions opened up and we can see the connection between the human being in front of me on earth right now and their dimensional existence somewhere else wow. that I can't even, like there's no language to define or name these places. Um, so it has opened my world up to the vastness of the universe, our soul that we can experience on multiple different dimensions, um, both in the present moment, obviously, we can look at the past. Um, the past doesn't necessarily always um, factor into the present in the way we think. So one of the biggest lessons that I have really received, and, and hopefully many of my clients have as well, is that just because you had a past life where you may have done something really crappy or shitty or awful doesn't mean that you have to pay for it now. Karma does not work that way. And so we can definitely look into past lives if there's a pattern that keeps running in your current life that you are really, really struggling with. Um, we can also look at the potential of where you are invited to go. What is it that your soul um, wants to experience through your human self? And that I call those soul agreements. And that's where I discovered that I'm here to work with people who have a desire to be famous for the work they do in the world. That's in my soul agreement, in my frequency that I carry. Um, and the reason I call them soul agreements, and again, this comes from the Akashic Records teachings that I have received is, uh, you've probably heard the term soul contract, right? Where, where we have these contracts between people and us or ourselves it's not a contract. It's more of an agreement because a contract, at least in our human life, implies obligation, right? Mm -hmm. If you're under contract, you better fulfill that contract or then you're in breach and all this stuff. A it's soul sued. agreement. <laughs> yeah, right? Your spirit's not going to sue you. So it's an agreement. You agreed with other people or with, with yourself to fulfill something, but that doesn't mean you're obligated to do it. You don't have to. Of course, life becomes much more fulfilling if we do, but we don't have to. And so when we say yes to fulfilling our soul agreement, um, that's when the guidance really pours through us. Wow, that's incredible. How do you cleanse yourself? You know, you're taking on a lot. You are communicating a lot. You're going into these records, I don't know, daily, weekly, mm -hmm. monthly, over and over again. Do you ever get lost in that space? Honestly, I want you to be, uh, want you to be honest with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't, April, because I've, I've, um, your intention and your, uh, I guess, goal has to be very, very clear. I think you probably could get lost, um, but because it all works on a permission basis, right? You have to give your permission to receive information, to allow it to flow through you. You can set up protection. You can set up parameters for how you want the information to come, when you want it to come. Um, I'm not necessarily like a like a 24-hour call center, right? So, so I I don't want spirit or any frequency to just be like, hey, could you give this person this message? From us? <laughs> no, <funny>. no, <laughs> because <laughs> that wouldn't work, right? I I don't want to be woken up at 3 a.m. and be like, oh, I better write this down for Jane or Joe or. Right. No. So, so I have learned to, <laughs> to set up intentional parameters and boundaries for myself so that when I'm working, I'm working when I'm not, I'm not. And that's how I, I discern between the two. Okay. And you also have to get permission from the person to Absolutely. enter to their, um, now, you know, there's always going to be somebody with some trickery. There's always yep. going to be somebody that's going to do something that's unethical. Mm -hmm. uh, how can a person pick the right person to walk with them, hold their hand through the journey in the Akashic Records? The most important part, I believe, is making sure that the, the person, whether you are, uh, you know, vetting a client who wants to work with you, or if you're a client talking to a reader or someone, a coach, whoever, you have to make sure that that person is doing their own work. They, they can't just have book knowledge, right? 
we, we all have a lot of book knowledge because we've read books, we've taken courses, but until we've actually implemented that wisdom into our own life and walked the, the path and you know, the difference, like you can feel the difference. And so I believe that the more you do your own work, like I've seen this in myself, the more I have done my own work, the more I have learned to trust myself and believe in myself and really honor myself, the more I, or the, the less often I have people who grill me on my credentials or who try to poke holes in what I do or test me because I no longer need to do that to myself. So if the world is a mirror, right? What is inside me is mirrored outside of me. And so the more I trust myself, the more you trust yourself, the less you're going to get people who then don't trust you, right? Mm -hmm. So is this, uh, is this reading like, um, and forgive my ignorance, is this like your weekly massage? Is this something that you need to tap into on a regular basis? Is this something that you can take the journey one time? Uh, is this something that, you know, as needed? I think yes to all. It really depends on your goals and, and what you're looking for. When I was uh, really doing my healing journey and I really wanted to uh, finally get through that, um, that shame of I don't like being a mom, I was in there all the time. I, I would ask questions. I would take the information. I would digest it. I would implement what I was invited to do. I'd be back again going, okay, I'm ready for the next step. Now my work is very different with my own records because I teach the course. I'm always open to new teachings, new material coming through me. Obviously I do readings for clients. Some come for regular readings just because they do kind of call it a, a tune-up. Some people unfortunately think that one reading is enough to like solve everything it's not right you've spent years coming to this point of pain it's going to take more than one time for you to unfold and unravel all of that um so if you're healing a lot you want to be in there more often if you're co-creating a beautiful life or a beautiful business you want to be there as often as you need to be so that you have time to implement what you're invited to to do um because what I, what I find, what I can tell you without a doubt is spirit, whether it's the Akashic records or whether you work with angels or guides, whatever you call that, spirit will never tell you what to do. They can't because you have free will, right? So, so the Akashic records can tell you, you know, yes, you have this challenge. This is why you have it. You could um, try these things or here's a potential solution, but it's always up to the human to decide, yes, I'm going to do that. No, I'm not. And if you don't do the, the thing you're invited to do and you go back in and ask the same question, guess what? They're going to give you the exact same answer because that is your point of resistance. Mm -hmm. Like that's where you're banging your own head against the wall. And once you can move through that and you're ready for the next step, they'll give you the next step. But it's always our choice to say yes or no. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I also noticed something interesting about you. You're a tree hugger. Totally. <laughs> I, and I am a tree hugger too. Again, I was turned on to that by one of my guests. I said, oh, you know, I find this an interesting meditation. She says, April, just lay there and just be become one with nature. Mm -hmm. I was exhausted afterwards. I really felt there was so much energy that was uh, transmitted, given and received. I felt grounded. Mm -hmm. What do you feel when you meditate with a tree? I feel this vastness, almost like I'm surrounded in this egg of love, but like a giant, like a, like a 30 foot field around me. And where I live um, recently, there was like three giant trees that were just cut down mm -hmm. and I grieve, I grieve. So I don't know how to describe that. It's this, they are sentient beings and whether they can talk to me or you or not, um, they do ground us and they bring us back to ourselves. It's yes. like they, they remove whatever is we think is important. It's so many years of rooted wisdom, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, from the earth, from the core, yeah. uh, reaching up into the heavens and the skies, through the rain, through the fire, through the storm. Yeah. They yeah. are there steadfast, you know, they yeah. had to be cut down. They were not going to be tore down much like we as individuals should be strong and rooted and, you know, uh, have to be cut down and not yeah. torn down. Yeah. So let's uh, do some fun things. 
tell me some fun facts about you. Because, you know, as we start, I love to see that smile. You are always so serious. Or, you know what, and what you're doing is serious business, but you're a lot of fun, too. Mm-hmm. So tell me two or three things that somebody would know about you. Well, the, the newest fun thing is um, on May 22nd, I fell in love with a dog. Oh, a, an God. old, old manky dog at the pet store when I w- went with my daughter to buy some fish food. And prior to that moment, April, I, I did not love animals. And, and anyone who knows me knows that. So I fell in love with this dog who was up for adoption. And I spent the next like month and a half desperately trying to find him where he would be adopted oh, wow. with organization. And I couldn't find him. I, I'm not even sure if he made it. Like he was, he was like 13. Anyway, I, it's like my heart opened up, like Cupid literally shot me with the dog love arrow and we ended up adopting a puppy like two months to the day later. And so now we have this, this rambunctious little creature (laughs) and I adore her. I just, she brings so much joy to my life. Her name is Jupiter and the whole thing has just been magic the way she has come into my life. And now I can't imagine that I ever didn't love dogs. Like it's literally a miracle in my life. Complete miracle. I know. I love dogs too. Uh, yeah. I, my dog got kidnapped by the coyotes. And oh, he, no. But I had a spiritual guy that was an animal communicator and told me that he's doing just fine and gave me some, some answers to some questions that I know that she didn't know because I didn't tell her. So uh, all dogs do go to heaven because dogs spelled backward is God. Right. I just got chills about that. Yeah. So uh, that that's a wonderful thing. So do you like to cook? Can you bowl? Do you sew? Uh, <laughs> I love cooking when I'm inspired. I'm more of a baker. Like I, if I could just eat dessert for the rest of my life, that would be the best. I only eat real food, like dinner food or lunch food so that I can have dessert. And I eat dessert every day. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a minute because, uh, we live to eat a lot of times instead of eating to live. And you talk about your soul food. What are some things that you eat that resonate and heal your soul? It's a really interesting question. I find um, I allow my intuition to guide me a lot in terms of what I eat within reason, of course, because like I said, if I could just eat dessert, that'd be great. Um, I try to follow like very much a seasonal way of eating and local, especially with all the crap going on in the world. Like it's really important to me to support my local farmers. I live in a small ish town in Kelowna in BC here. And so we've got, uh, That's Canada wonderful... brains, British yes. Columbia, Canada. <laughs> yes. West sort of West Western part, not quite West coast, but like we get our milk delivered, we get our eggs delivered, our butter. And so I know I'm supporting the animals, I'm supporting the farmers, and that just makes me feel really good. So I don't necessarily follow like a certain way of eating, but if I can buy into where my food is coming from, then I know that that food is happy, which then makes my system happy. Absolutely. It's sourcing it, it's sourcing it. So what does your husband and kids think about mama's doing these Akashic records when she should be, uh, a nice pencil skirt and some red oh, no. shoes and a briefcase <laughs> uh, going no. to work. She's not going to work. She's going to spirit. What do they yeah. think about that? You know, my kids grew up with this. They really precipitated this whole journey. And and my husband and I, we've been married um, 20, it'll be 21 years, September 16th. So oh, congratulations. We've been together longer than we were ever single. Like he's, he's really, Brian's really my rock in my life and, and just a wonderful man. And we have always grown at roughly the same pace. So we've never outgrown each other. We've always made the choice to choose each other, choose our, our relationship. And we've been through some like hellish times in our life. And and so my kids and my husband, we we all sort of grew up together in this spiritual exploration that I that I spearheaded. I I'm a verbal processor. And so I love to talk through the these things and, and talk about these things. And now my kids are my son's going to be 19 next month. My daughter is 17. And wow. And uh, we have the most amazing conversations about spirituality, about these things. And, and my son especially will be like, you know, I was talking to a friend and I could hear you coming out of my mouth. 
And he's oh, like, yes, I hope. My, daughter, my daughter says that too. She yes. says, oh my God, I'm turning into my mother. But in a good way, right? Because way. I just, whatever I learn, I want them to know. And so they know my whole story. They know the story of my struggle with, with, you know, motherhood and, and, and the shame I felt. I, it was important for me, for them to understand that so that Absolutely. I, so that, you know, cause I didn't have the best relationship with them when they were little. I, I was just in such a dark place. Thankfully their dad was able to stay home with them while I worked full time. This was still when I was in corporate and I was just a better mom doing it that way. Right, and right, I needed right. them to understand my journey that it wasn't them. It was, it was like my path and they really held space for me. And so on a soul level, like, I just feel like these two beautiful beings um, who are my kids, like they knew what they were getting themselves into and they waited for me to get my shit together so that I could rebuild my relationship with them. And I, they're my, just my favorite people in the world right now. I just adore them. I know. I know they, they, they do something to you, you know? Yeah. When you look at, like I said, like you said, a mirror, when you look in that mirror and you see a reflection of who you are uh, and it's through your children, it does your soul good. It does your soul Absolutely. good. And you have done our soul amazingly good. Please, uh, Kesha, tell my um, brains how to get in contact with you. If they want more information, if you want to become, I don't know, do you call it a practitioner, a teacher, a guide uh, with the Akashic Records? Google it. I Googled it. And every time I Google it, I find out something different. Totally. Something yeah. Different. So and it is, a, and it is scientific brains. This is not just some cool stuff uh, and spiritual teachings from thousands of years back. Yeah, it is absolutely. So the easiest website for for me to say that I don't have to spell is sacredfame.com. dot com. Um, I also have a website under my own name where you can find so kasharashville dot com, and I imagine April will put that in the the notes absolutely. underneath. Absolutely where you can find my course. I'm not the only Akashic Records teacher. I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but if you feel inspired by the records or by me, I would love to have a conversation. Um, my, my next course starts September 9th. Um, and you know, there's, there's space for eight people. There's a, a couple spots left. Uh, but, but really, if, if you feel called by spirit, whether it's the records or some other way, just, just do yourself a favor and say yes and find some teacher someone who resonates with you who who can lead you uh back to yourself because really that's the whole journey is is spirit wants us to know that we are worthy that we are whole that we are enough and that we are divine and when we remember that and we live that when we embody that the world just is such a better place for us and for everyone else it is and you know it's scary right now brains i want you to hold on okay i want you to hold on tight um there is opportunities to grow, to develop, to change, to uncover and discover things about you that you never knew before. Some of them, yeah, they're going to be a bit shocking, you know, mm -hmm. but some of them are going to bring you great joy, great laughter, uh, great peace, uh, and a, a sense of understanding. So if nothing else, you know, if you don't want to become a practitioner, have the conversation, okay? Because mm -hmm. knowledge is power, but not mm -hmm. until it's applied here on the edge. I want you to go brains and do everything that you're supposed to do. Like, love, share, subscribe, connect, all of those good things. Okay. Thank you so much, Kesha, for being here on the edge with me and my brains. You are amazing. And I'm so glad that you are uh, in a good headspace and also in a space to help others. Thank you so much. All right. Brains, it. do the work.